Right, this is another mathematical finance video and it's on the minimum variance line which is quite similar to the last video uh, with the weights so but it's just for more more than one security which is why for we're now going to denote w as a vector with a n different security so you'll have w1 w2 or wn u is going to be a unit vector with n ones so that we can multiply w times the unit vector transpose and that's going to be equal to one um, now this is a new notation we're going to use instead of so instead of putting e expected value of k so it has the retur uh, expected return we're now going to denote that as mu and we're going to have those lined up in a vector and call that M. Uh, the covariance, that's a bit more useful this time. That's going to be a conver covariance matrix. So we've got the KIKJ, that's going to be equal to CIJ or big C. So that the and in the event that the, both the I's are the same, uh, so it's CII, this is going to be equal to the standard deviation of I squared. And that's quite useful, so using that we can work out what the diagonals are going to be. Uh, one thing as well, which I think is uh, wasn't actually in these notes, but it's quite useful to remember from last time, is the uh, correlation coefficient of ij is equal to the covariance over each of the standard deviations. Right, now, using this matrix form, we can say that the standard... Uh, Standard deviation of the wealth squared is equal to W times C times W transpose. And we can say that the expected return, so the total expected return on the wealth, this is equal to M times WT. Right, we've got an example, and then we'll be doing some more definitions. So I just thought I'd break it up a bit. Right, we we'll want to compute the expected return and the standard deviation of a portfolio with three securities. So it's got three, so we're using this, the, the vector notation. So, and it's got these weights. It's got weight uh, 40%, minus 10%, and 70%. And this does add, add up to one, so that's fine. Uh, we've got our returns as 0.1, 7%, and 11%, so 10, 7, 11. And we've got our standard deviations. There's lots in here, but it's already needed. Standard deviations as 1.2, 0.8, 1 1.1, and our correlation coefficient as 0.2, minus 0.1, and 0. Right, so the first thing we're going to, I'll just point out what we're going to do first. We're going to use this here, which is a nice easy one to calculate the, standard, uh, the return. So we're just gonna, we've already got our M and W, so we'll do that fine. Then we're, then we're going to have to use this formula here, so we're going to have to, for this, so we've got our W's, but we're going to need to work out our correlation our covariance matrix using the uh, rearrangement of this here. So, nice easy one, remember. So, we're just multiplying the uh, M by W transpose to give a return of 11%. So, that was nice and easy. Now, we want to work out the covariance matrix. So we've rearranged this so we can get. For each of the CIJ, we've got our correlation coefficient and the standard deviations. So now we can calculate the proper matrix. And like I said before, it was a little fact we knew that if uh, I and J are equal, then it's just the standard deviation squared. So uh, 1.44, 0.64, and 1.21. For the other parts, we're just going to substitute the values here. So we've got C uh, one two, one two, uh, uh, correlation coefficient one two from here, zero point two, and remember that these are is it called symmetric? So uh, correlation coefficient one two is equal to two one. So that's why we've only got three. And we can see that when we're going to put these values in, it's going to be symmetric because of that uh, understanding. So that these two are going to be the same, those are going to be the same, and those will be the same. Which will give you the matrix, 
0.0880 minus 0.0881.21. Now we just want to multiply this on the left by W and on the right by W transposed to give us the standard deviation squared, which hopefully, if I've done it correctly, will give you this value here. And then we just square root it and we get the value 0.9092. Hopefully that's the right working out. Right, now we've got some more definitions. This is the main part of this uh, video. And it, this uh, first we're just going to have a quick look at here. We're not going to do an example with this, but if you wanted to do one, it's not that difficult. Uh, this, in the last video, we showed how you could calculate the best weight uh, for W1 and W2. But this is just a better way which does it to give you a vector. So once you plug this in, this will give you the minimum variance portfolio with weight vector w. So you'll get a 0 0.2, 0 0.7, 0 0.1 as a, a matrix. And that'll show you how to distribute your money between them in the best way. Right, now this big thing here, this is what's known as the minimum variance line formula. And this calculates for you the minimum risk. And you can plot this, and it will tell you where is best to invest. So the, the places where the, the risk is the minimum. And it looks quite messy, but the, the way I can see to work it out is that you always have a U in front on the top and an M in front on the bottom. So U is up. So you've always got U's in front up, only on the top, not on the bottom. Uh, this is the ret expected return of the bulk, so uh, UV. Uh, and then the other thing I could notice, which you can probably notice too, is that we always end in a U on the left and an M on the right. So we've got, there's no, there's no C's on here, so we can ignore that, but then we've got an M, uh, U, no M's, U, M. That's the only way I can see to try and remember that. Right, so I'm just plug everything in. These are, these are determinants. So we've got an example. We want to find the minimum variance line for, it's only a 2x2 two two because a 3x3 three three would be quite long and messy, but we've got our C as 2, minus 1, minus 5, 3, and, our, and C inverse, which you can calculate, but I've just given it here, is 3, 1, 5, 2. I try to make them nice. And we've got our M just ignore that equals, I don't know why that's there. M is 2, 1. So they're the returns. Right, and that's a, that's a vector as well. So, all we want to do first is we've got lots of things to calculate from this formula here. So we want to calculate this thing, which is also repeat. They, they tend to be repeated somewhere else, so that's also there. So there's a lot of things to calculate, and these are all here. And it's not as difficult as it looks. The first, the, the first ones you want to calculate are the, this one and this one, the UC inverse and the MC inverse. So the UT inverse, it's just the unit matrix, uh, which is going to be two. There's going to be two values in it. Put that in front of this, and you just multiply that, that, which will just give you a three. So you're, I think. Am I right in saying you're just you're just adding these together? Add that and add that. So that's a nice easy one. And for the M as well, you just put the M in front, and then it ends up being because of the way this is. I think it's two times that one plus that, two times that. Uh, no, two times that plus that, two times that plus that. So we've got eleven four, and we can use these to calculate the rest of this. So now we want U transpose. We put a U on the end of some of these. Or we'll put uh, an M transpose on the end of these, and it's a nice simple two, me two vector times a two vector. And these will give you the values here 19, 26, 11, 15. And then all we do is put that into our formula. So it's not that difficult. 1, 19, 26, 8, 3, got the 8, 3, 11, 15, 1, 11, 15, 19, 26. And luckily, on the bottom here, 
I didn't plan this, but it just did. It worked out to be the determinant of that is one, so that's nice. Um, the rest of it, we've got on a different side. So this is equal to one, and then we just multiply the rest of it out. I've put that there, so we multiply this, uh, vector by that, which will give you parts of this. Uh, same for here as well, and then I just separated it. So I took took all the parts that didn't have a mu v in and put them together and then this part together as well. So this is this is our minimum variance line. As you, as you can see, it's done as a line. So usually back a long time ago, you'll have learnt a line as y equals mx plus c. So this is our c and this is our x and this is our m. So it's it's a line. That's how it's plotted. I hope that makes sense.